Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Or you need food for any mashapa, one in yana wa movenda. And if you're here for the first time, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, a veteran in this channel, welcome back for yet another exciting episode of risk, money, and insurance. Okay, so today, if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button below don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you get notified whenever i post a new video which will be on a thursday evening at 7 pm and so here we are today starting with today's conversation i think i'm super super excited to be talking about property right like what are some of the things that you should consider and i'm actually thinking of doing the property series in march so hello welcome to march and it's going to be a property month on the channel i plan to bring guests over as always i'm going to be bringing you guys people who are doing amazing things you know amazing amazing stuff in the property space yeah people for that matter so I hope you will be inspired to start your own property journey as well well I haven't I, I am on my journey as well my property journey and I haven't really you know I wouldn't really say I am an expert an expert in property and all of that i just have one property so it's not really much but still on this journey i feel that i've learned a couple of things and today's video is dedicated to randy um randy actually contacted me on in uh, not instagram on facebook and she was saying hey i am thinking of buying property can you please do a video um on property and what are some of the things to look out for and so i've I haven't gone through the whole process myself I feel there were a lot of things you know that in retrospect I was like I'm so grateful that I had other people guiding me because I took it upon myself child to literally speak to people who own property so that they can help me on the journey so this video is not meant to be long it's supposed to be like that check you know checklist that you can use to determine you know okay do i go for this do i go for that but anyways let's get into point number one right what do you need to consider if you're buying property point number one is affordability i i have to emphasize on this one and if you guys see me like looking on the side i've got my laptop the side so my points my talking points are here so if i look this way you know but number one is affordability like definitely you need to know you know what you can afford and at this point in time interest rates are high and all of that so it's important to also you know cater for future interest rates hikes if they are you know happening if you watch that video when we were discussing you know the economics of south africa with governor i would definitely advise you to check it out he mentioned something very profound he was like you buy if you're buying property buy when the interest rates are high because you know that you're able to afford like that property for real because if you buy when interest rates are low then it's all it's also a thing of when interest rates now begin to increase you're gonna have a problem because if your your bond you know is is using variable interest rates where interest rates are linked to the prime rate right where you're given maybe prime minus one percent or prime plus something then it becomes really difficult when interest rates increase because that just means your monthly installments will increase as a result so it's quite important to know what you can afford and also know like the price range you're looking at to say how much am I willing to pay, you know, on bond, re on, on bond installments? And also what about levies, utilities, and all the extra costs that come with property? So those are just standard, like your bond repayment and your levies and your utilities. Those are standard, like you will be incurring those on a monthly basis. So it's important to be able to know how much you can afford. And if you have a financial advisor, I think it's a conversation that you can table with a financial advisor to say, hey, this is what I'm looking to do. And if you don't have a financial advisor, then it's also something to say, well, go online, maybe look at those mortgage calculators as well. So sort of have a rough idea of, okay, if interest rates change, to like perhaps you, you you're not being charged 11 percent how much your installment will be worst case scenario they go up to like 13 percent to just have that idea if you're looking at a price point perhaps that's around 800 000 or like a million 
So those are things that you need to consider. Affordability, very important. Secondly, I'd say location, 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 because it's important, right? It determines the value of the property and also sort of like, you know, your security as well, which is like the third point as well, which I will touch shortly. But location, location is important because if you're planning to like rent the pr this property out in future, or if you're planning to stay in this area, or if you're planning to sell this property in years to come, if the location is not really great, it can devalue the value you can decrease the value of your property which is something that you don't want right because overall we go into property knowing that you know the value will increase over time and so it's also important to choose the right location like if your property is closer to schools or like closer to um what are those shopping centers and you know it's connected roughly connected to like major roads and all of that or you can get to major roads quickly and all of that those are some of the things that you need to consider because if you're buying a property that's isolated or like in a very remote area or, or and, on, and all of that you know the value of your property may not appreciate as much as you would like it to in future so another one number three which i've sort of like alluded to is security and this is very important especially if you're going to be staying in the area or even if you know you're going to like rent out the property because the people will also be checking for safety we know South Africa is not really the safest place in the world and when we talk safety honestly it's just relative to say where you can have a little bit peace of mind you know so safety is really really important and i think what i did to sort of check the safety you need to just like drive by the area right you know see whether people are jogging or like walking I, I, you know what they're doing do they jog in the evenings do they jog in the early mornings in that particular area because it indicates how safe people that are already staying there feel right although it's not like a really accurate you know measure of safety but roughly you know do they have have, you know security companies you know do they have electric fence do they have security guards you know what's going on roughly in that area so that you know whether you know it's a safe area or not or like people are getting hijacked i think one other thing you can check online for the stats crime rates as well i mean a lot of people don't report crime in south africa so that's also like another i guess downside but for the stats that people do report just check around the area theft check around all the things like what's happening in the area what kind of crime is prevalent in the area check online for that particular area you're interested in to know like what you're getting yourself into because once you lock yourself in that property child it's done okay cool so another point that i will say like it's important for you to consider is the property condition and this comes with you know is it an old property is it a new property roughly for like a, a new property or a new development it will be very you know proper like everything is still new roughly and all of that you might face maintenance maintenance issues here and there like at first because you know no one has stayed in that property so they don't know what works what doesn't work but normally the developer might be liable to actually make any repairs and all of that in the first few months and all of that depending on you know the type of contract you've entered into of course with your developer but when you come to old properties right old properties are spacious uh, but of course they're old so you need to also gauge to say okay what about future maintenance costs as well if it's an old property and if someone was leaving there, chances are they have fixed whatever that was you know wrong at that particular point in time but because things are old like the 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 plumbing is old the pipes are old and all of that there might be like additional costs that you will incur in future just to maintain the property but you also need to just like find strike a balance right because new properties they are big they're in great conditions they create great condition they look good and all of that but what's happening is the sizes are smaller but the price per square meter is actually higher compared to like your old properties that are very spacious but like the price per square uh, square meter is is definitely not that high because of course the age of the property so it's also important to do your research around you know ask around you know the age of the property look around and i also think when you're doing your viewings as well as you
review different properties right also have your own checklist to say what are things that are important to me as a person like do i want granite tops or uh, i will i don't mind even if i don't have granite tops or even if i don't have the best kitchen i will set aside like a budget for me to renovate you know and, and like remodel the place or i want a place that's almost close to what i want so that i don't have to remodel those are some of the things you should consider like how much space do you want how many bedrooms do you want how many bathrooms do you want does it even matter if you have two or one bathroom like things like that right to just you know know as you going to view all those properties to gauge like okay it's an old property but it has what i want or it's a new property but it's not that spacious and i want to live with my family or all of those things so it's quite important to consider you know the property the age of the property and when you go to view the property as well like check the surroundings i think for me i i discovered like later on how when i was going to do viewings and all of that i wasn't really paying much attention to like the surrounding and other like properties that are around or and, and all of that which was a bad thing but i would say definitely check from like walking you know you will drive through or whatever walk through the gate of the property walk in how is the feel you know how is access controlled are people just coming in and out like when you go in does it look like this property is well maintained you know you look at the garden like for maintenance these are tips like the garden the painting you know the carports does it look like this place is well maintained or not these are some of the, like the important things that will show you like red flags mini red flags that will say this property is not well maintained or like the corporate body body is suffering with you know maintaining this place or whatever or people are not paying you know their levies and all of that you see because of the projects or the kind of pro projects that are being carried out on the property so it's also like another important thing like subtle thing to actually consider another one is property rights right so it depends like what kind of property rights um, do you want or, or like what kind of property rights would you have if you decide to settle on that particular property is it like a freehold where it's a piece of land where whatever that's on the land you own everything that's on there is it like you know a sectional title deed where you own a, like normally if you're buying an apartment or a townhouse and there are other apartments and townhouses in the same you know complex then you like owning a sectional title deed and i think you know sometimes i think of it and i'm like this thing is a scam because honestly what it means whatever that's on the outside you don't own what is on the outside and like even like when it comes to walls and paints and things outside of your apartment you don't own that the, that's that's like body corporates um, property what you own is whatever that's on the inside you can do whatever you want on the inside but you can't wake up tomorrow and say I just want to paint my apartment yellow I want to paint my apartment green like you need to abide to the body corporate standards of the look and feel of the property on the outside so that's like it's like well you have a sectional title deed at this point I'm like a sectional title deed doesn't really feel like you have much control you just have control over what happens on the inside but as to the outside there's nothing there so that's also important to say well what kind of you know um, property rights do I want and it's also important to ask as well I was watching um, million dollar listing um, America New York million dollar listings on on what's this on on Netflix right um, I love 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 just like watching property reality shows and all of that just to see get an inspiration I mean we have to dream right so um, they, they, they spoke about you know air rights as well right so say for example you you buy like um, an apartment or you buy like a, a yeah an apartment block and all of that you also get air rights where you can build like upwards but other times you don't have air rights so you don't you can't build you know going up you just wait well, if it's like how many meters tall or how many yeah how many meters tall you cannot increase um the the height of, of the building so that's also important to know like especially if you in town or like in yeah in town town to know like whether you have air rights as well and all of that it's good to ask you know ask your lawyers am i allowed to like add another floor and all of that and also when you're buying like townhouses and all of that I know that you can like extend but you need permissions in order for you to extend like your townhouse and all of those things so it's important to have all those things like in check because guys 
yeah otherwise you trapped in this thing and you trapped in it for a while another one is legal consideration and i was shocked and i think when i, I watched Bupilo and sipo's video on property how they bought like three properties in six months and i was like whoa these guys are winning so when when they were explaining how um just lawyers fees. I, I think it was Ripilo who was like, yo, I didn't realize that lawyers, especially like who deal with properties and like just all those deeds office and things that they deal with so much. I think they call them con convincing lawyers or whatever. I think it's that term. Yeah, those lawyers, they end so much. And I also realized that when I, when I bought my property because it was like, dude, those costs are going up to something like, you know, 60K. Just upfront, you know, this is not your bond, this is not your deposit, but it's just like costs that you're paying upfront. And this cost can be higher than that, depending on, you know, the size of the property, the purpose of the property, and all of those, you know, and all those things. So it's also important to think about the legal considerations and the legal fees that are associated because you'll be paying the attorneys, you'll be paying for bond registration costs and all of that, which my bank was like, we can actually, you know, um, what is this, capitalize those bond registration costs but that just means now you're borrowing more so your installments are going to be a bit higher so for me i was like okay i will just throw in all the money that i have cover like as much upfront costs as i can in order for me to be able to you know at least start off on a bit lower level but yeah there are those major costs that you pay upfront legal costs that you pay upfront to register your bond to just transfer you know especially if you're buying the property from someone else then there needs to be those transfer costs as well to transfer like that property from someone else's name to your name so these are all like you know nitty gritties and all those little things that you need to consider up front and if your property i think is over a million rands in south africa then now you need to also to consider like the duties there there's transfer duties like a tax that you need to pay as well so it's like all those costs they they lump up and on top of that you need to pay like a deposit as well but if your bond um covers fully the full amount then you may not need to stress much about paying a deposit and all of that but it's also good to just pay a deposit so that you know you save an interest in the long run but anyways the last one is definitely financing how are you going to finance this property right so you know are you going to pay cash are you going to go via the you know the bond market try to get a bond you know via bank and finance it via bank and if you're going that route then it's important to say how do i get the best deal out there so now there will be time for you to make different applications and all of that i know that there are different um i don't know whether to call them companies or all of that like better bond where you submit your stuff and you tell them like this is the property value all those things and they try to find the best rate for you so it's important to like yeah do that but i'd say start with your bank you know the bank that you you're banking with right now because you already have a relationship with them start with them and figure out if you know you and them can come up with a better proposition for you know a better proposition for for this for this property financing but overall and above i think it's I think for me, because property is such a, a big commitment, it's very important to think about, you know, why you're buying property and also what's your plan? Are you trying to grow your property portfolio? Are you just, you know, are you just testing it out? Are you tired of renting? And consider all those extra costs that are involved in just maintaining and having property before making that decision. But those are all the points that I had for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And when you go to like buy property, you're well informed. And I will just say, someone asked me to do a review on this book because I posted on my Instagram. If you're not following, following me on Instagram, it's Furufelani underscore mesh on Instagram. And I wrote like a review, a mini review on, on Instagram about, you know, black females um, in South Africa in corporate and all of that. And this was such a really eye-opening book. I think one of the things that I'm realizing as I grow is how I love stories. Like I am, I don't know, I have this thing in me um, that loves stories. And at first it was just like I would go, I would, I would read novels and all of that. But these days I, I've moved away from just reading novels to reading people's stories and the challenges and, you know, 
the things that they went through in life and this was one of those books where i related so much with a lot of stories that were here because you like sometimes you find this tricky area of corporate navigating you know people and your work and navigating your career progression and all the other things that you want to do at work so definitely will definitely recommend you know you reading this one and not only for females but also males as well i always say like if male leaders can also tap into the understanding of the challenges that females in the workplace are going through you know then they will also you know incorporate that experience in the decisions that they make because I mean let's be honest corporate is still fairly much you know a boys club um, not a lot of females are you know in those top positions so they are making you know those uh, I mean there are some that are making those big decisions but it's not a lot it's just a few percentage of, of people so the more we engage and at least you know interact on the, and, and exchange these experiences the better we can make this world um and i'm currently reading this one because i finished this one currently reading this one um i'll do a review on this one i'm sure probably before the end of this week i'm almost done i think i'm left with like 10 20 pages so i'll definitely be on the lookout on my instagram for the review of this one stay by the path by bobby so yes guys we've come to the end of the video don't forget to like comment share and subscribe Mwah. i love you guys so much i'll see you in the next video all right